I think we all realize the difficulty is obviously arbitrary. What I find hard and what you find hard can be completely different things. But even with that being said, I believe that there are certain experiences that are intended to be very, very difficult. Just as a random example, this is a Sega Genesis game that's essentially a complete knockoff of The Legend of Zelda, and in my opinion, it is absolutely a rough little journey. And it really sort of highlights the fact that there are certain games that are designed to be tough. And today, I really want to take a special look at those. This is Top 10 Thursday. I'm Dreamcast Guy, and we're going to be diving into the great stuff that's come out recently and will probably kill you a million times over on my picks of the Top 10 Hardest Modern Games. Number 10. Monster Hunter World. If you grew up pretty poor like I did, I'm sure you had those situations where you just randomly walk out into the woods, pick up a stick, and start to imagine the entire world as your own little adventure. Each tree a separate beast, every single log a different titan that needs to take you down. Well, I've always really liked the Monster Hunter series because it sort of tries to encapsulate that. It is the embodiment of that endless sense of adventure and danger and excitement, and also the willingness to compete completely murder you at a moment's notice. Now, for the most part, I am going to say that this is the most fair style of death on the entire list, but still, Monster Hunter World loves to bash you about. You have to figure out how these creatures are going to fight, or you don't even stand a chance. And if you don't have some friends to try and help you out, the odds are pretty much stacked against you. Number 9. The Talos Principle Something I believe personally is very often understated is really sharp puzzle difficulty. Games that manage to put stuff in your way that is just hard on your brain, but not necessarily something that tests your reaction time. It's just about you trying to solve what the heck is really going on. The Telos Principle basically drops you into a universe where you're a robot trying to solve a series of problems to maybe get to heaven. It's very, very mysterious, but each of the puzzles on the surface seems so basic. It just seems like you're trying to move a couple sensors, jam a couple laser grids, and maybe bypass that next barrier. But funny enough, it's just so hard. Every area typically has at least one or two puzzles that are so difficult you're going to have to either look up what to do or spend an hour and a half just staring at the problem. Number 8. Neo. There's been this rising trend over the course of the last couple years of titles that manage to be very, very tough while also being fair. Things like, of course, Dark Souls and Bloodborne come to mind, and Neo sort of follows in those footsteps by giving you bosses that have like a million HP, but I think where it really stands apart is that it really sort of emphasizes player ability. Your way and how you fight is essentially the entire battle. You can change your stance, you can sort of affect your tactics. You have lots of different options on how you want to defend yourself, and when you die, you know that it's completely your fault. Now, Neo is actually lower on this list than a lot of other From Software style games, but it's still something that's going to make you see a game over screen pretty dang often. Number 7. Alien Isolation. There's really something to be said about incredibly sharp horror experiences. Stuff that can make it where your pulse is pounding and your hand is gripping your controller so tight that your hands are sweating, but you don't quite want to quit. And I think that Alien Isolation, it really walks that very razor thin line. It's scary, it's spooky, but more than anything, it is downright brutal at times. This alien is basically impossible to kill. You can scare it off with fire or use deflectors but if you make one loud noise, it's pretty much going to eat your face. But it's this thing that I actually love about it. The game really manages to make it a super long experience of hide and seek with deadly consequences when you screw up. Number 6. Celeste. 
This game was actually one of the very best projects that released last year because it combines things like raw difficulty, cutesy art, and a really solid story on top of everything else. But what really makes it special in my opinion is that it really sort of glorifies your own death. Each time you die in this game, it's not treated like a bad thing. Instead, it's considered almost like a high score because each and every stage is going to murder you possibly hundreds of times over. Now you see, the reason for that is that this requires absolute pinpoint precision. You need to make leaps, you need to make jumps, you need to time every single dash to try and ricochet you off a wall to land perfectly on the next space, or else you'll land in spikes, or get crushed by a lever, or maybe just go down into an infinite gap below you. Now this sounds like it'd be frustrating, but since that death counter is almost a badge of honor, you just get more driven to try and beat the stages again, to find more secrets, to find how much you can actually make it to the top of Celeste Mountain. Number 5. Dark Souls 3. Alright, so we all knew that this was going to be in the video somewhere, but I thought that it'd be appropriate to put Dark Souls 3 right smack dab in the middle, because this game manages to do things like pull your entrails out as you scream for mercy and put impossible giant Cthulhu-esque monsters all over the place, but additionally, what makes it different is that you can level up. If you're able to put in the hours and just kill the weak mobs over and over again, you will eventually get stronger and beat pretty much anything. The reason I still have to put this in the video though is because it can be so freaking punishing. Honestly, for my first 10 hours in this game, I was dying so freaking much, simply because I did not actually have down the rhythm of Dark Souls perfectly. You need to be able to just slip into this universe and roll and dodge and deflect, and if you screw up, well, that's just gonna be a big ol' nasty bloody game over. Number 4. Dead Cells. When you really take a step back and think about it scientifically, what is it about a game that makes it hard? Is it things like high enemy damage, low health, or is it just one of those things where every single situation is completely outside your control? Well, Dead Cells manages to actually blend these aspects of disempowerment together. You see, this is something where every time you play it, things are randomized. You don't know what boss is going to be coming up in what order, which skills you're going to obtain, or even sometimes which path you need to take in order to advance. Now this sounds like it'd be something that could be frustrating or bewildering, when in fact, what it ends up doing is creating almost a sort of unique magic. Dead Cells is fun, but I like it because it never seems like I'm losing purely because of my own fault. I need to try and increase my own ability, my own tactics, my own way of fighting, that way no matter what hand I get dealt, I can possibly progress. I like a game that seems like I am being in Powered instead of just my character, and Dead Cells absolutely masters that. Number 3. Sekiro. Okay, so let's face it, some people are going to be a little bit upset that this is so high up on the list, because there's this weird community that likes to just constantly go all over the internet and say, Sekiro is so easy! Sekiro is the easiest game in the world! But that's just not really true. I mean, look at any of the videos of people who are getting stuck on the first troll, or the people who ended up smashing controllers just because they couldn't get past the opening areas. Objectively, we can say that Sekiro is tough. And and to me, what makes it truly special is the fact that it likes to just beat the heck out of you. There are not conventional upgrades. There is nothing in this game that is straightforward. You need to find secret unlocks, you need to try and track down the weaknesses of bosses, or if you want to be incredibly tough, you just need to face things again and again and get your freaking face ripped off repeatedly until you master the enemy's motions. This is a game that is a true trial to see who is a tough gamer and who is somebody who just cannot take the heat. But part of that is why it's so fun. If you can survive it, it's something that will create lifelong memories. Number 2. Cuphead 
Each and every time I turn this game on, I'm simply just blown away by its really unique art style. It has a really powerful aesthetic, but as soon as I stand here and stare at it too long, I'm normally going to start losing health and pretty much die. This is pretty much one long memorization test. You need to actually know and have it written in your brain what every freaking foe does, where every gap is, where every everything is, because if you don't play it perfectly, you will die. That's not a joke. What's really interesting about this game specifically though is that I've noticed that if you get good enough at it and learn every phase of particular bosses and stuff, really some of the hardest encounters can be finished in less than 90 seconds. It's just one of those things where there is so much on screen at once and so many different pitfalls you can fall into, it's a problem of you need to be perfect or you're going to be dead. It's either a triumph or else it's your funeral. And it's a balance that I think is is tough, but certainly very, very entertaining. Number 1. Darkest Dungeon Family really has a way of sometimes just completely screwing you over. Perhaps they steal money from you, or guilt trip you into going to a crappy birthday party, or maybe they do something like this, where your ancestors basically made a giant cursed house, and now it's your job to try and adventure to the bottom of it and survive the darkest dungeon. Now, to try and actually make it through this turn-based RPG, you need to be better than just talented, you need to basically be a god, because every time you get into a fight, you're trying to basically basically keep your own health solid, and also worrying about your sanity. Over time, your people will crack. Each different encounter is going to destroy you mentally and physically in some fashion, and using your own randomized heroes to try and take them down, eventually you will be screwed. But that's kind of the point. This is one of those games that I truly believe was made to be impossible, and some people just happen to be lucky enough to have conquered it. But even still, I gotta give it credit for being by far the toughest modern gaming experience. Did your toughest little game not make the list? Got an idea for a future top 10? Leave in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. So you know what's kind of funny is the fact that this thing that I showed at the beginning of the video is so expensive. Sometimes people will pay $200 for this. I found this for $5 on eBay a couple years back. And if you can find it for cheap, it's certainly a game that's worth checking out. Everything on this list is going to kill you, but this game will at least be cutesy while it kills you. Ah! Okay, you know what? I'm not, bad. I'm not good at the shelves. Let me put that up here. Perfect. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last, or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.